Welcome to Talking Points. I'm Esme Murphy. I am talking about sleep. In this conversation, specifically women and sleep. This will not come as a shocker to most women, but women are not getting enough sleep. And one reason is that they are being underdiagnosed for sleep apnea. People with sleep apnea experience upper airways collapse, blockage, breathing stops or is shallow and can lead to snoring, gasping and leads to disrupted sleep, heart failure and even death. The Mayo Clinic used AI to review more than 11,000 electrocardiograms. What they found is that sleep apnea in women often appears less severe, but that women can suffer more damage to their heart muscle. Joining us to talk about the use of AI in diagnosing sleep apnea and its important ability for detection in women is Dr. Varen Summers of the Mayo Clinic. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks uh, for having me, Esme. Okay. Let me ask you, uh, what is sleep apnea and why is it getting underdiagnosed in women? So sleep apnea and uh, basically there's two kinds. There's a central apnea, which is the kind of apnea people get with heart failure or people have when they go to altitude to ski. You'll find that your, your, your wife, your kids may be having what's called central sleep apnea. They stop breathing briefly. That's not the apnea we're going to talk about. We're talking about obstructive sleep apnea which is the apnea associated with loud, disruptive snoring, with a cessation of breathing during the night. But that cessation is accompanied by a very deep, rasping inspiration and uh, restless sleep, uh, severe daytime sleepiness, more often affects men than women and presents with, with uh, uh, tiredness, fatigue, falling asleep when driving, falling asleep when watching TV. Uh, patients are often, though not always, overweight or obese and um, has been accompanied by a significant increase in cardiovascular risk, specifically things like high blood pressure, heart failure, atrial fibrillation, and even sudden death during sleep. I know that your study found the when you put AI and looked at these 11,000 plus electrocardiograms, mm -hmm. you found something different, though, with women and, and women apparently are being underdiagnosed in, in this very serious. This isn't just about sleepiness. I mean, this is this is about your overall health, even potentially ultimately death. Can you explain how that worked? Yeah, um, w women uh, for, for many years, we, we we've known that sleep apnea seems to affect men more than women, although after menopause, women start catching up to some extent. Um, we've always assumed that maybe it wasn't as bad in women in terms of the outcomes because the sleep apnea was never as severe. They will have sleep apnea sometimes only during what we call REM sleep or dream sleep. And that's because during dream sleep, we lose our postural muscle tone. And when we lose our muscle tone, we also lose the muscle tone in the upper airway, making it easier for the tongue to fall backwards and obstruct the airway, giving us what we call obstructive sleep apnea. So if a woman has sleep apnea predominantly during the REM sleep stage, the way we classify sleep apnea is we average the number of apneas over the entire night. So if they're having even severe apneas, but limited to when they're dreaming or in REM, when we divide it by the total hours of sleep, the number is low. So we think, well, the apnea is less severe. The other reason it's missed in women is because they present differently. They may present with fatigue, with depression, with just a general sense of tiredness. They may not present with that obvious, dramatic, disruptive, cataclysmic snoring that you see in movies and that you see with men. They may not present with the classical severe daytime sleepiness, falling asleep when driving, falling asleep with the with the, while watching TV. So there's been a number of studies recently showing that the diagnosis is delayed in women because it's often missed. They get treated with antidepressants, with, with medications to, to help their alertness level. And it's only later that sleep apnea starts becoming part of the picture. Not only is the diagnosis late, but the socioeconomic consequences of the misdiagnoses in women is significantly greater than in men. In fact, there was a very nice study of about 70,000 people from Scandinavia showing that not only was the diagnosis made late, 
but the consequences in terms of economic uh, mm -hmm. uh, loss, in terms of disease conditions, was much greater in women than in men. Let, let me ask you, with the AI and the use of AI, looking at all of these EC, um, ECKs or EC, ECGs, excuse me, mm -hmm. when they looked at them, what can the what can AI do that perhaps you, just you yourself can't, or or you yourself with a, a very good computer sure. can't? Sure. A great question. Um, you know, when we, when we are trained to look at an ECG and to look at specific aspects of the ECG, each a P wave, what we call a P wave, a QRS, a, a QT interval, uh, and, and these are traditional ways that we look at the ECG, we classify it, we make diagnoses. Now, there are often encoded in the ECG tiny deflections, perhaps, tiny changes in the intervals, things, things that we don't know about, that the naked eye cannot see, and that a regular computer analysis cannot see, but that an AI algorithm exposed to thousands of ECGs will eventually say, wow, you know, these people have sleep apnea, these people don't. The people with sleep apnea have these little teeny tiny deflections in the ECG and it's always consistent. And we think that's a sign of sleep apnea. So the fundamental uh, underpinning of the study was the, the hypothesis that the AI algorithms could be taught to find things in the sleep apnea ECG that were not present in people without sleep apnea. And if I could just finish and explain why we, we did that is because sleep apnea we know affects the heart in many different ways. Increased arrhythmias makes the heart thicker, the heart can fail, uh, there's an increased risk of coronary artery disease. So we thought, well, maybe sleep apnea is having effects on the ECG that we are not seeing until you get a really dramatic presentation like a heart attack. So maybe the AI ECG was able to see those tiny signals hidden in the ECG that we couldn't see. And, and let, let me ask you this. Um, in terms of, you know, I think women are conditioned that in life, you, you're a woman's going to be tired, yes. um, especially with yeah. kids. And, you know, we have a lot going on. We're working, we're working inside the home, outside the home. Um, it, so so women perhaps may not even think, think of this. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give uh, a woman who, you know, maybe her, her partner is not complaining about her snoring, but something's off and she doesn't seem to be sleeping well. I mean, do, do, do sometimes women not even know they got sleep apnea? So you've, you, you've actually touched on several important points there. The first is that when men are diagnosed with sleep apnea, it's often the woman's spouse who comes in and brings him in and says, he's snoring like crazy. He's something's wrong. Please, can you check him out? Uh, a woman don't have that privilege. Men tend to sleep through the night and not notice that their wives may be snoring, maybe not terribly loudly, but certainly having apneic episodes. So that's one way it's missed. The other way is exactly what you said. Women have very busy schedules. They're often multitasking. They're, they're looking after the kids, doing a job, taking care of the home. And so they, they have that sense of, yeah, I'm tired, but I should be tired because I'm doing all these things. And maybe I'm feeling a bit sad and depressed. And, and that's maybe because I'm carrying all these, 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 these burdens. But, you know, it may be that they actually have sleep apnea and that's the, the, the okay. underlying cause of their problem. If a woman sees this and suspects maybe that's what I've got, what do you do? Do you go try and get a sleep study done? The, the, the probably the, the easiest way to, 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 to address it is to talk to your doctor. Even your primary care practitioner could just get you an overnight oximetry monitor. So that's a little thing you put on your finger or your ear and you go to sleep at night and that monitors your oxygen throughout the night. Remarkably, the, the woman had less severe sleep apnea and they were younger. And yet that, that, that fingerprint of sleep apnea on their ECG was more manifest than it was in men who had more severe apnea and were older. So he's telling us that sleep apnea may be hurting the heart in women more than in men. And in fact, that's the, that's the emerging evidence that's coming out that sleep disorders in general, whether it's sleep apnea, whether it's getting inadequate sleep, Disruption of sleep in women, we always thought women were resistant to sleep disruption because they look after kids, they get up at night and they feed the child. 
and that maybe they evolved to be resistant. It turns out that that isn't so, that women are in fact more sensitive to impaired sleep than men are. And I think that is a, a good reason for women to be more uh, proactive in terms of getting help with disrupted sleep, particularly in the peri and postmenopausal periods when these things can become more evident. Well, Dr. Varen, thank you so much. I really You're appreciate your time. You're very welcome, Esme. Thanks for having me. And that does it for this edition of Talking Points. As always, please email me with comments and suggestions at esme at cbs.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Esme Murphy, WCCO News.